Hello everybody. In this uh, short presentation, we're going to look at an introduction to HTTP. So basically, uh, when, you, when you would like to connect to the internet, usually the connection is an HTTP connection. You can make a lot of other types of connections, but what we are concerned about today is HTTP connections. What's an HTTP connection? It's a protocol. It's a client server protocol. It's called the hypertext transport protocol. And it's uh, in short, it's HTTP. Okay. So this protocol is, is a client server protocol where a client sends a request to a server and then the server responds to the client's request by sending back a response. So basically it's straightforward. There is a client and then there is a server. The client makes a request and the server makes sends back a response. Very straightforward. Now, how is this the anatomy of a request itself? The request has a lot of a lot of parameters, but the most important components of a request are what follows. Uh, the first one is the URL, which composed of a host, where are you trying to go, and the path in that host. In, in, on, in other cases, also the port where you are trying to access. Basically, it's, it's, it's the URL, a URL connection, like www.abc.com, uh, for example, or uh, www.google.com, you know, HTTP, uh, google.com, www.google.com. This, this is a URL, which describes where you want to go, you know. So that's one in the request. The other thing is the method. The method is a way for the request to specify what generally it wants to do. And there are different methods. One of them is, for example, get. The most popular is a get and a post. But there is get, post, delete, and so on. So, but the, the two that we're going to focus mainly on are get, get me something. Right? So basically, the method is get something. Post is when you are submitting a form, for example, and you say, I want to post this data to the server. Okay. So... These are, this is also another component of the uh, request. The other one is a header. The header is, uh, is a, a component of the request which you can store some data. You know, the data, of course, is, uh, uh, has a limit on its size, but it, you can store this data. And this data is in, is in a key value pair kind of format. Okay. So that's the header. And the header also you can store data, for example, to describe the authorization, uh, uh, the authorization method that you are using, the content type that's being, being sent, and so on, right? So that, that's the header, okay? And then a query string. A query string is in some URLs that you see, you see at the end of the URL, there's a query string, which starts with a question mark, then a key equal value. So Q, for example, here, Q equal tests. And... Uh, uh, you can send multiple parameters, and parameters are separated by the by the uh, the and sign, right? So that's basically so you have Q equal test and state equal North Carolina, for example. So basically, that's the query string, and also you can send in the request a body. A body is like the the uh, the flatbed of a truck. Basically, that's what you, where you could send as much data as you want. There aren't that limits on how much data you can push in the body. So you can push data inside the body. So basically, if you look here, these are the components of a request. So that's how the request is composed, right? Now, the response has also components. So when the, res when the server sends a response back, the these are the main components. One of them is the status code. Status code is to indicate if it was successful or not successful. It's a code. It's an, it's an integer. It's a number that you receive that uh, the server is going to send back in the, in the response and to indicate what happened, right? So basically, uh, for example, if it's from 100 to 199, it's for informational purposes. Successful responses are from a number from 200 to 299. There is a whole list of uh, uh, that describes what each number means, but this is a summary of what are, what's a successful response and so on. So what's a successful response would fall from 200 to 299. Redirects, sometimes you access... Uh, you try to access a specific URL, and then that URL redirects you somewhere else. That that could also be counted as a successful response. So you could think of successful responses are responses that are in the 200 and 300 ranges, right? And then uh, errors. You had a very famous one for 100 or 404. These are all errors. These are called client errors. This means that the client, the person, the, the the client made some kind of an error. Send missing parameters. Uh, try to access a URL that doesn't exist, and so on, right? Server, parameter, server errors are from 500 to 599. Say, let's say, for example, you try to access something on the server and then the server uh, ran out of memory or the send server had some error in its script. Uh, to indicate that to the client, the response will have uh, an error code or a status code uh, 500, between 500 and 599. All right, so that's the status code. 
Now, that's just to indicate what happened. Also, there is a body that gets sent back. The body is where the server actually provides the data. So basically, when you ask something or you request something from the server, the server sends back a response, then the response is sitting inside the body, okay? And basically, or the, the, the data that the server wants to send back is usually in the body. Another location where data could be sent is in the header. So basically, additional, additional data can be sent in the header, but usually the header information is information that uh, uh, is, is required for some kind of configuration. To tell you, for example, this is the uh, authorization token. This is, for example, the authorization method used. This is the content type that is being returned, and so on. So it's more of a configuration kind of uh, information. You can send data also in back in the header. So that's the anatomy, the overall anatomy of what um the uh, http system looks like there is a request and then there is a response so basically the client so for example the mobile app creates a creates a request it gets sent to the server the sender the server receives the request parses the body parses the parameters tries to figure out what you're trying to do and then it it for example could query the database to get you a list of contacts for example and then it sends back the response a response which has the data that you requested all right so please let me know if you have any questions and in the next couple of videos, we are going to look at how uh, to make these kind of requests and uh, how to add parameters and so on. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.